In the volatile times that we live in, there are many people who have admitted that they have never spoken to a Muslim or met a Muslim or ever visited a mosque before. Now with everything that's going on in the world today and how Islam is being portrayed in the media, we feel it's very important that people know or are aware of what's going on in a mosque. I mean, for people who have never come to a mosque before or visited a mosque, they only assume that worshippers come in and out every day at different times, or actually we're unaware of what they actually truly think. That is why today we have invited a guest to the Beth al Futu Mosque to spend the day with us and see what his thoughts are. In the next few days, I'll be visiting one of the largest mosques in Western Europe. It's the first time I've actually been to a mosque, uh, and I'm not quite sure what to expect. I've been to churches uh, quite a few times, and I'm really interested in different religions and different people's beliefs. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to expect when I get there. Um, it'll be quite interesting, but I'm really interested to looking at the buildings and, and seeing what goes on there. And the people have been very helpful and hospitable, and so I'm really looking forward to it. I think that I might find that some of my expectations get challenged uh, and some of the thoughts that I've had about Mus Muslim uh, and Islam as also might be challenged. But I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, The main purpose of any mosque is to worship the one God. So it was essential that Bryce experience sitting inside the prayer hall and observe one of the daily prayers being performed by the congregation, the Asr or late afternoon prayer in this case. He then also witnessed the Dars al-Quran being given by an Imam of the Amdiya Muslim community in which portions of the Quran are recited and explained in detail. These are the essentials of any mosque, fulfilling the obligations of worship through daily prescribed prayers and uttering the words of Allah. Did, I don't know if you went. I, I used to work for the Church of England doing research and statistics, yeah? And in the centre of the building, they've got the Synod, which is where they have the kind of church council. And in the centre of it, it has a, a, a dome, and around the edge of it is written kind of biblical kind of text. And as I went in, I immediately thought, oh, wow, this is this dome thing. And then I noticed that there was Arabic writing around it. I mean, just thought it was quite similar. But then the other thing I noticed, well, I'm obviously going to notice is there's which I'm intrigued by, there's no statues. There's nothing, no. there's no imagery, no statues. There's, there's no nothing pictures, kind of... which is, because uh, I kind of quite like, I quite like the statues, I'm mm. quite used to them, but, yeah. I mean, but there's, there's, there's nothing like that here at all. Yeah, because the that? thing is, our, our main purpose of the mosque is to worship and to create a atmosphere of peace. Uh -huh. uh, and the Arabic writing that was written on the actual dome was that it surely with the in worship of God that your heart can get true satisfaction. Uh -huh. So when you're worshipping, the same reason why men and women are separate as well, right. that your attention should be solely on worshipping. Right. Um, we don't want anything that could distract you or that could um, get your mind off of worshipping. Right. Because worshipping is not easy as well, to be honest. To do what, so what you just witnessed was just one prayer of five that we do in a day. Right, okay. And so there's a certain, so when you're standing, there's a certain prayer. When you're kneeling, there's a certain prayer. When you go lounge, there's a certain prayer right. that you have to do. So, yeah, so there's, there's different stages. What are yeah. you doing when you're standing? And so that's what I'm saying. There's different prayers that we recite. Are you reciting prayers yeah. internally? Yeah. Yes. There's two prayers in the day, that are two afternoon prayers, that um, they're silent prayers. So right. you would, whatever you're reciting would be in your mind. Right. Every other prayer, so the three other prayers that we do in congregation, they'll be said out loud. Oh, okay. So actually, you speak out loud. <clears throat> Whilst absorbing the unique experience of seeing worshippers bow down to their Creator and obtaining further information on prayer, Bryce was led to the Bethel Fatou Mosque Library. 
the library houses over 18,000 books. Just over half are religious books, with many written by the founder of the MDM Muslim community and his five successors. But, as Bryce found out to his surprise, many of the books are not religious at all, and people of all walks of life use this library. So we go interesting. Yeah. Oh, let's go So this is the library. Um, as we said, a lot of schools do visit. Okay. We do bring them here because we do a focus, and um, education is very important in our religion as well to right, okay. educate our youth. Wow! So this facility Amazing. is here uh, wow. for people to come and. It, you've really got it together. Yeah. <laughs> you've really. I think these are sort of the students that have visited. They've just left the the thank you notes or some remarks. So this is just a wall of remembrance, you could say. Oh, well, you've really got it together. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it really is purposeful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this is like, this is better than like a regular school library. Can you study here if you're... Yeah, that's why the facility of table and chairs and computers are here. So that if you need to come and study, um, you can do so privately right. in a quiet kind of atmosphere. So I'll just introduce you to our librarian. This is Mr. Walid. So Hi, he's yeah. in charge of the Hello, it's a pleasure meeting you. I'm Bryce. Okay, hello. How are you doing? This is Very Bryce well. He's visiting the mosque for the first time. Okay, nice. It's yeah. the first time he's coming to the mosque. And we're just showing him the different facilities. Okay. This is Mr. Walid. Okay. He's uh, in charge of the library. Yes. It's a beautiful library. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so who comes here? Is it people from the mosque and then it's groups of. Well, it's people from the mosque, yeah. right? So we get uh, a, a fair number of people coming here. <laughs> and we get different types of people depending on the time of day. So mm -hmm. during the early part of the day, uh -huh. you've got the, uh, the elderly, the, uh, uh, those people who are retired come yes. here to dip into the newspapers that we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two researchers as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, during the evening we get students. Right. Um, in the chair. So it's not just studying Islam, it's a, a place of, for the community to come and then look at newspapers and also students to find a quiet place to study as well. Yeah. We've got 18,000 books there. Wow! And, uh, and although the, half of them, I would say, would uh, deal with religion, mm -hmm. but uh, there's another significant number that deals with uh, you know, contemporary subjects and academic subjects. So we've got books on law, we've got books on architecture, yeah. we've got children's section as well. And um, so it is um, well used, well stocked. Yeah, this is a library yeah. where you can study Islam, but it's, yeah. it's a library where anybody can come and make use of yes. here. We have a lot of school visits, and that's, again, part of our drive to try mm -hmm. and integrate and inform people. Yeah. And we literally have thousands of uh, school children visiting right. here every year. Yeah. But in addition to that, we also get visits from uh, university students. Mm -hmm. we get, uh, we've had vis visits from the University of Chichester, for instance. Wow. And we've also had last year, uh, not last year, this year, we had a visit from the University of Kentucky in America. Wow. That's so amazing. This mosque is quite popular, this library is quite popular in that sense. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. After a detailed discussion with the librarian, the next stop was the in house bookshop. This was an experience that we see Bryce particularly enjoyed. The very first book that Bryce saw was the Holy Quran, a book regarded as the most important book in a Muslim's life. The different copies of the Holy Quran in various languages fascinated him. So this is our, wow. our bookshop. Oh, yeah. Mostly you'll find books in here for sale that are written or authors from our community. This is the Quran. Of course, and it opens that way. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you can have a look. Open it. Have a look. I just think I'm just a bit nervous in case I'm like. No, being, no, no. You have a look. We feel being free. disrespectful. No, at all. Not at all. Are these the different chapters? This is just the. Which one is? So this is part ways. This is a you can say part to part, chapter to chapter. Right. Um, in terms of how to read it, translation, pronunciation, it's color coded just to teach. And I think each different book is a different chapter. Okay. And it's in Arabic. This is the thirteenth part. Yes, yeah, Arabic, Arabic and Urdu. And this is the English one. So this is the English version of that. Oh, that's interesting. This is part three. So it will give you the split word translation in Arabic. And Fascinating. The separate um, Istan. 
part wise. So this is part three. Okay. Is that the thirty chapters? Yes. So there are thirty parts. Sorry, thirty parts in this book. Right. And there is only one Quran. There's one Quran. Yeah. The reason why you see loads of them here, they just we've translated them into many different languages right. over the years, um, and it can be translation, commentary. Um, Are they different trans? No, different uh, languages. Different translation is the same. Right. Next, a portrait of the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Mehmed, the founder of the MDM Muslim community, caught Bryce's eye, which raised many questions about the idea of a spiritual leader and caliphate. Bryce was intrigued to know more. Adam, I'm a bit puzzled by the Messiah, but I had so, never heard yeah. about that. Is this that? is the Messiah that we said. He's the promised Messiah, the person who was prophesied to come by the founder of our religion in the latter days. Yeah. By Muhammad? By Muhammad. Muhammad said that a time will come when the state of Islam will be very weak right. and the teachings will be there but the people won't be following it in the right manner. Right. Then a Messiah would come who would be a prophet and he would bring back to light the true teachings of Islam. What's his name? His name is Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and he's from India, Gardian, a small town called Gardian in India. Well that's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah. He's obviously passed away. He's passed away and now after his passing, so when a prophethood, when a prophet comes, after his passing, a institution of Khilafat, Caliphate starts. And so these are pictures of the f uh, Caliphs that passed so after uh, his demise. In the same way when yeah. the prophet died, yeah. Caliphate yeah. came. Yes, so yes, these yes, well. yes. So he, he's the first Caliph. Yeah. It's complicated but simple at the same time if you right. get it, once you get it. Is that so kind of relationship between the, the spiritual and the earthly? Of course. Yeah. It's a sp there's a spiritual prophet and then there's the earthly realisation through the Caliphate. Yeah, to help every... The thing is, religion is for all of mankind. It's people of all different um, level of intellect. Right. So it's, it's... You can say in that sense it's broken down so that everyone can understand it. Another item available to purchase at the bookshop were caps traditionally worn by Muslim men. Wow, so this, this is, is a Persian cap. Yeah, yeah. So this is very much tight-fitted. You see this a lot in Morocco. This is like in Morocco, in Northern Africa, yeah. basically. Even in, um, in Saudi you Arabia. Is it as mark of respect? Yeah, mark of respect and a sign of responsibility, and also that it was the practice of the Prophet to right. cover his head when he was praying. So this is the Indonesian one that I was talking about. Oh, okay. This is, one, this, is this your one that you've got? The one I've got, yeah. And this is um, one that you find in ah, Pakistan. that's Pakistan. The Jinnah, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. I don't know if you know him. He's famous for wearing these hats. You've got, there's a picture of him somewhere, I think. Can I put it on? Of course you can. Does that fit you? you can no, take... I think my head is far too big, as you've noticed. What size is that? Head. Get one that fits you. This might be better. Give yeah. us a spin. You can't tell me. You look, no, no, I can, it's, it's great. I love the fact that there's all sorts of different... You can take one if you want, or you can take one along. As a, something to remember us by. That's very sweet. Front on backwards, and then put it on back, yeah. It doesn't need to go all the way to the back, though. Well, I thought I'm trying to be like, kind of all kind of like I'll the you, so you No, no, it doesn't need to go to the back, so you just It just put goes it on, on the front. On the front, there. Ah, yeah, I'm loving it. You see it? Just take it off, take it off for a minute. Take it You're off. going to show me the right way yeah, to put so it on, just, aren't you? No, it's just an easier way. So if you just spread it a bit with your fingers, yeah, and then put it at the front of your head there, and just pull it back. Yeah. There you go. If I can't get it right, I'll yeah, practice at home. No, that's fine. There you go. We're like twins now. <laughs> of course. I, all right, so you can take whichever colour you want. I'm you going want. to take this one. The black one? Yeah. No problem. Thank you very much. No, Thank no you. Problem, it's very no kind problem. of you. Bryce explored the entire Better Futur complex which comprises not just the actual mosque itself, but many other facilities, such as a kitchen and a dining area, where thousands of meals are prepared on a weekly basis. Meals are served free of charge three times a day for all guests and workers at the Beth al Mosque. After seeing all the delicious food being prepared for guests and workers, his next stop was the large community hall in the complex, the Tahir Hall which is used regularly for community functions and sporting activities. Bryce naturally had many questions about Islam and the mosque, so we arranged a meeting with the Imam of the Beth al-Futu Mosque, Mr. Nassim Bajwa. Bryce wanted to know if being an Imam was a great responsibility. This is Imam Nassim Bajwa. 
He is serving as the current Imam of the Beth of Tumas. It's a pleasure to meet you, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's the first time I've ever been to a mosque and I was just, uh, it's just intriguing and it's, it's fascinating as well. I thought it was really peaceful when I was in there. How long have you been the Imam here? Uh, I came here in 2009. 2009. So about eight years. Okay, it's, a, it's so many people, I can't believe there are so many people that kind of come and make use of the place. How does it feel, is it a great responsibility? You see, of course, it is a uh, responsibility, uh, whether people are more or less. The main thing is that uh, we have to perform our duty as Imam. Yes. And uh, this is the largest mosque in the Western Europe. Yes. Every week, 5,000 people come here for Friday prayer. Right. This mosque, because it's the largest mosque and it's a, in a way it's a headquarter of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. So the supreme head of the Ahmadiyya community, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad Sahib, who is called Khalifatul Masih, mm -hmm. the fifth. He comes here every Friday okay. and he himself leads in the prayer. Bryce's visit to the mosque coincided with the final days of Ramadan. So he was keen to find out more about the month of fasting. You see, the first thing is that uh, this uh, law about the fasting is not only in Islam. It's uh, in all religion, in one way or Lent. the other. Oh. There is Lent in Christianity, there is Yom Kippur in uh, Judaism, but here in Islam, the main thing which we are taught is that you should reduce your material food, physical food, and increase your spiritual food. That means right. you should turn to God Almighty, yes. spend more time in uh, prayer and worship, yeah. and also you should realize the difficulties and the pain and the miseries of uh, the poor uh, yes. and neglected people in the world. So this is why it is said that in the month of Ramadan, you should, you should not only just abstain from food and drink yourself, but also you should spend more and more in the, uh, for the poor and needy people. So this is why, in fact, the month of Ramadan is a great blessing for all the poor people of the world. Right, because the, because the yeah. local people are yeah. uh, exercising charity. That's right. Mm. I mean, I'm just astonished. I'm astonished, uh, you know, I mean, it's really interesting listening to the particular way that you're kind of looking at and look at things and also I'm just as I said to one of your colleagues whenever I go to a different building there's this kind of sense of extended community that comes from you know obviously the mosque itself but it seems to pervade every building like the bookshop there's like the sports hall there's oh yes, yes. it's the it's really palpable you can kind of feel it and there's a I have to say there's a sense of peacefulness here yes that's what I was quite that's quite surprised when I went into hmm. the, you know, into the mosque itself. It's just how peaceful it was. Yes. Yes, you see, the other day, you see, one Englishman came here and he said uh, that I just want to spend uh, a f few minutes or a few hours if possible yeah. in the mosque because I have felt here so much peace yeah. that I have never <laughs> felt that peace anywhere else. And even in the prayer it was peaceful. It was like just gentle, we yeah. gently move into yeah. this. Yes, no music, you see. No, no there's no, there's no <laughs> Nothing. music. All your attention is towards your Creator, your God. And the words, if you read the words of the prayer, mm -hmm. you will be even more uh, fascinated because everything which is said there, it is focused towards God, your Creator. And you pray not only for yourself, in fact, you pray for the whole uh, world. How do you feel about awful things done in the time of Ramadan? But, you know, we've seen. I mean, it's every. I mean, it's always everywhere. Yeah. It's irrespective of it being seem to be driven by particular. I mean, everywhere there, there's war, but particularly in kind of Muslim countries and in, in the time of Ramadan, when there's there's you know there's war going on and acts of atrocities and that. How how's, how's that? Do you reconcile that somehow with? Is it is the sects? Do you think of that in terms of this? this, this the, that's what other sects will do. Do you mean? Is it? You see, that's a very important thing to know that uh, as far as we, Ahmadi Muslims are concerned, by the grace of Allah, not a single Ahmadi is involved in no. these kind of uh, violent attacks in any part of the world. No. But outside the Ahmadi community, of course, we know that these things are going on and this is why we be, uh, feel that there is a need of this community. <laughs> Of course. You see? Of course. So if these people join the Ahmadiyya community, yeah. then they will also become peaceful. Yes. So, so it means that our, it's our duty that we should try to reach everyone right. and uh, uh, bring them to the fold of uh, this community right. so that they all become uh, peaceful. 
And as you know that our motto is love for all, hated for none. You see? Yes. So, so if all the people awesome. accept this motto, yes. you can understand that uh, how there can be anything uh, violent and uh, extremism as we, no. we see nowadays. Now, Shri, I would like to give you a copy of the Holy Quran. <laughs> I love books. The, oh, really? So That's I amazing. Hope, I hope you'll... I'm really uh, <laughs> shall I, shall I open? delighted shall I and treasure it. Can I really show you? Well. Let me show you. Yes, this is... Uh, this is the Arabic side, yes. this is English translation, and this is the commentary. And it's all in English. You know. I'm really, really <laughs> yeah. chuffed. Right. I love the phrases in the, in the name of Allah, the compassionate and merciful. Yeah, yeah. Which, and I love every, poetry. Every, verse, uh, every chapter starts with this uh, uh, small verse in the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm really humble. Thank you very much so indeed. Please. Thank you. And the fact you're giving to me makes it even more special. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank okay. you. Thank you. It's been a real Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. It's a real treasure this. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Really Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. It's so cool. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. There are. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. After a long day exploring the site and different sections of the mosque, Bryce was treated to a surprise visit to the headquarters of MTA International, going behind the scenes of a live program being aired on MTA. MTA was established in 1992, which broadcasts across the world on 10 satellites to reach its millions of viewers. MTA is the global hub for the MDA Muslim community worldwide. It was a live call that was being taken from a diet and nutrition. Oh, really? So she was just saying how whilst we're fasting for like 18 hours, how to maintain oh, okay. the weight that we lose and everything, for our physical benefits of whilst fasting. So yeah, what we were saying, everyone in there and most people in here, you're volunteers. And they serve their, they give their time. I'm just amazed. <laughs> I'm just amazed how much there is here. Mm. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it before. I mean, I mean, I'm quite a naive person. I'm not, you know, so I'm not, but, but I'm just amazed at how much there is here. I mean, there's like a full-blown studio in there, After this, we're going broadcasting to, to millions of people, yeah. Yeah. 24/7. Yeah. Yeah. Bryce's visit to the mosque had come to an end. We asked him for his unbiased opinion about his first visit to Western Europe's largest mosque. I've really enjoyed my visit to the mosque. Um, it's confounded all my expectations, but I think most of all I've been really impressed by the massive sense of community that extends from the mosque itself to every one of the buildings and the people who have been really kind and generous in showing me around. And it's confounded my expectations of what I, I'm seeing in the media and, and, and what I'm seeing in television. and, and what I'm seeing is a, a group of benevolent, kind and generous individuals who naturally wish to integrate to propagate their values. And I think it's, it's going to take me quite a while. I have to really digest this and think a lot. It's quite philosophical, philosophical about my thinking. I'm going to have to really digest this, but I think it's upset all of my values in a really good way. I think it's excellent. It's been a really worthwhile experience. And I think that anybody who comes here should we would be why would they not embrace these values and sense of tolerance and generosity it's been really and really amazing and also i'm genuinely impressed that this building this this like it's like a thriving community not only here but as it kind of goes around the world in the kind of media and everything i think it's amazing it's 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 great who wouldn't want this it's great it's fantastic